Um, hi, daughter. Um, I'm very pleased to introduce Daughter Langer, who is Vice President of the Danish Teachers Union. Daughter, how long have the children and the pupils been back in school in Denmark now? They have been back a little over a month now. Um, so, uh, yeah, and that's the small, small children uh, up till 11 years old uh, who are back. Uh, so it's been it's been quite a while now, uh, and I think and actually uh, next Monday and uh, or the week this the week coming up to this weekend, uh, the older children has also come back up till sixteen year olds. So uh, yeah, so things are developing. Good. And um, before the schools were reopened. Uh, what role did you play with the Danish government and the Danish education ministers in planning for school reop reopening? Were the unions invited to come in and help the government plan? Yes, uh, the Minister of Education, she called on all the organisations around the school, uh, our union, uh, the headmaster's union, the, the pedagogues, the preschool teachers were, were also represented, parents' organisations were in. So, and we were together in, uh, in big Skype meetings, uh, making advice for, for the minister. And our secretariat in the teachers' union had worked very closely with uh, the minister's uh, staff people. Uh, and uh, we have said, uh, based, on, based on the infection rate in Denmark, um, which were never as high as it is uh, in your place, I must say, we are not more than 500 people something has has died from this uh, mm. virus in denmark mm. and uh, and okay we are we're a population of 5 million so it's it's but it's still much lower much lower than the, in the mm. uk uh, so based on that fact and based on the fact that uh, society had been locked down for quite a long and very firm and very early in this in, in the epidemic mm -hmm. We had all reasons to feel okay, safe about this. And health authorities had made out regulations that, that uh, also made us feel quite uh, safe and secure. So also, I mean, in, in the line of, uh, of a very uh, long tradition of cooperation between governments and employers and unions, in Denmark, we uh, we were able really to uh, to make these things work, and our members felt okay, safe. Of course, a bit of anxiety, a bit of nervous. I mean, and it was all because of all the restrictions, all the precautions that had to be put in place before schools were opening. So it it, it also was it was hard work uh, for our members uh, to go back. Yeah, but um, we would love to have had that level of cooperation and negotiation with the government and perhaps we wouldn't be in the place now where so many schools will not open when the government says they should uh, if, if, if we'd have that cooperation. Mm. Um, as you were um, preparing in detail for schools to return, can you tell us about the precautions that were put in place and which had to be followed so that schools could reopen safely? Yes, um... Children had to be in smaller groups. So we usually have around 25 uh, pupils per class, around that, a maximum of 28, but that's quite rare to have that many. So, and those groups were divided. So approximately 10, 11 um, children in each group and uh, one or two uh, teachers for that, for that group. Uh, and those groups were not, they were not, uh, they could not interfere with each other. They could not play together, the group. So the, every child was in his own group for the whole day. Mm. Um, and, um, and if they were seated in the classroom, they, uh, they had to have two meters apart. Uh, but very much, very much of the teaching was done outside. That was one of the, the advice that was given to, to, to stay outside as much as possible. And then uh, we had to uh, wash our hands every 90 minutes at least. And uh, also before eating and after eating, before playing, after playing. So uh, there was lots, lots of hand washing going on. That has been released a bit now because uh, still the infection rate is going down still in Denmark. So, mm -hmm. but that was, that was one of those, uh, the precautions uh, that we had to have in place. And 
the minister was very, very firm on this and saying to, uh, to local authorities who have the responsibility for, for the schools that they could not open before all these precautions were put in place. Mm. You know, also, how do children get in and out of school so that those groups shouldn't meet? That was lo logis logistically uh, quite, a, quite, quite a challenge. Yeah. But, uh, but it was, yeah, I mean, our members and the headmasters, they really, they really showed uh, that was, and it was possible to start. So some municipalities also p postponed the, the, the reopening because they weren't ready. So that was quite responsible. Mm. And did the schools get extra money to put in more sinks or to have more cleaning or for what they would need, you know, what was needed? Yeah, there was, uh, there has been put out money for the municipalities in order to make uh, cleaning, uh, the cleaning standards had to be raised a lot. I mm. mean, every day uh, all the rooms had to be cleaned, all desks cleaned, uh, so, uh, so they, they've got extra money for that. Mm -hmm. And I also know that in some, some places, uh, extra staff had been called in to uh, support the teachers during the day. Because, of course, we, we're usually one teacher for every 20, 25 children. And now we, we had to have smaller groups. And you can't just have uh, the seven-year-olds. They can't be left alone uh, the half of the day. So, so, uh, so we also had extra staff in, the, in, in this period. So, mm -hmm. I mean... Children in Denmark have really experienced a, a wonderful school day with uh, lots of attention from, from teachers. And, and I think they've learned a lot in this, uh, this period. Yeah. And were there, the, were there extra teachers available? Enough extra teachers available to do that? No. So, it, of course, it, had to be, it also had to be not, edu not teacher-educated uh, uh, staff coming in uh, yeah. to, give out, to, to give helping hands. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, very good. And so it's obvious that your government acted early, acted strongly, kept the viral infection suppressed, mm. acted quickly to close schools, and when it reopened them, did so in a very, very controlled way. It just wasn't, because our Prime Minister has said today that he's, you know, in effect going to leave it up to the head teachers to make the decision. Mm. What do you think about that? Well, I, I must say that uh, that is to leave the headmasters in a total impossible situation. I mean, the health authorities in Denmark have put out some guidelines for, for us to follow. And I think that has been an enormous help and made everyone feel much more safe. Mm -hmm. And also the Danish government has decided to, uh, to reopen uh, the society in, in phases, you know, in the... Mm -hmm. uh, now, the, now with this phase of the reopening of the of the primary school and 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 later some more and now as I I think I told you the other day that our pubs are open now also so it's yeah, uh, yeah and theaters uh, museums are opening but still <clears throat> still we cannot gather more than ten people uh, right. for gatherings so that's right. that's still kept uh, quite low right um, yeah but, so yeah so I think. The responsibility from government and saying we are going to put people first here, and they said that all along in Denmark, and that I think that's that has made people feel safe and secure yeah. enough to go to go ahead on this quite difficult but and challenging uh, work of reopening the schools. Yes, uh, we we long for the day that pubs, restaurants, and theatres are reopened, yeah. and we want the day to occur when schools are open properly as well, because you know they are so important for society. But they have to be safe to do so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And I think it 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 has it has been managed. Uh, well, in Denmark, of course, we also had difficulties. Of course, we also had discussions. I mean, during East, the Easter days, uh, our health authorities came out with these uh, guidelines for the reopening of schools. And before, before the reopening of schools, they've said that people with special health risks, they should stay away from the surrounding society as much as mm -hmm. possible. Mm -hmm. But then when we had to reopen the schools, they said that teachers with health risk could easily go to school. They could mm -hmm. easily go back to work. So we had uh, we had some very nervous members there, and uh, we had to be in the uh, uh, we we were really busy during Easter negotiating this, and uh, uh, also then again the Minister of Education she stepped in and said, that, well we have to have 
we have to have, make the teachers feel safe about this. So we ended saying, uh, along with the health authorities, that everyone who might be in doubt of anything should call uh, your own doctor, get get a survey, see what 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 you might is will it be safe for you to go back or will it not? So yeah. an individual, concrete uh, evaluation of that. Very good. Dorsa, thank you so much for uh, letting us, shining a light, a window into what happened in Denmark. Mm. Uh, we we would perfect. really love to be able to work in the way that you are suggesting with government and mm. we would love to be in the place that you are. Maybe one day in the not yeah. too distant future, we hope that we will be. But thank you yeah. very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Nice to be thank with you. you now.